All right, welcome back once again. This is now CL 1-3, the third part of tutorial one for the commercial project. Uh, we're continuing from CL 1-2, so I've already done the first couple of steps. So now we're going to tag and dimension the doors and windows. So so far we've uh, or we've located uh, everything. So actually, I've already located everything with dimensions. We're just going to do the final uh, dimensioning for this. So not much more dimensioning, mainly just uh, doing the tags. Okay. So uh, before we can tag the door and windows, uh, doors and windows, we need to modify them so that the numbers and letters show up in the correct format. So uh, in your study of architecture, you've probably done this before, where you've had to take a floor plan and apply a letter or number to the door and window, and then put it onto a table known as a schedule, where we can give additional information about it. So the Revit program does the same thing, except without, uh, or with rather, uh, linking the information from the floor plan or the drawings to the schedule. So as we modify the doors and windows, the schedule will modify as all modify also at the same time. Okay, so uh, let's first go ahead and find the door tag family in the project browser. So you'll have to scroll down to the bottom here and we're looking for families which is what the tag is, is actually a family and then uh, you're gonna go to annotation symbols and then door tag. That should be right about here. So what you'll do to edit the tag is just like the procedure says, you'll right click on the tag and hit edit and what that's going to do is open up the family file for the door tag. Okay, so this is the stock door tag that comes with the template. So we're going to do some modifications to this. We're going to do a couple of things. We're going to change the format of the number in the tag to a letter or actually uh, letters and numbers. We don't set that up here. Instead, what we do is set it up to either be a mark based on the type of door it is or just a sequential number uh, arbitrary number if you will for the door so we're gonna do the type numbering uh, system so uh, what we're gonna do first is click on the field for the mark so we're looking for the text called 101 so I've highlighted this and then you'll see in the properties uh, box we have an edit button next to the label that's really what this is as a label so we'll click on edit that's going to open up the edit label dialog box. So right now it's uh, set up as a parameter called mark. So we're going to get rid of that and change it to type mark. So I'll hit the uh, red arrow to remove. And then I'll go down to where type mark is and hit the green arrow to add. So now we're changing it from saying 101 in the sample value to 1T. And then T would mean uh, type. So now we'll hit OK. And that's it. So now when we re-enter this uh, family back into our project, it'll tag based on the type it is rather than just a sequential number. So all doors will have the same letter in this case. Uh, all, all of the same type of door, rather. All right, one other thing that we have to do is uh, create the masking region. So we're going to go to the Create tab. and uh, we'll click masking region and then we'll just select the two arcs and two lines that make up the boundary the reason why we're putting in a masking region is because we want the extension line to be cut as it crosses over the tag right now they don't do that so we'll go ahead and click the uh, arc the line the other arc and the last line once we get an enclosed boundary we hit the green check and that's pretty much it. So this tag is good to go. Now you can save this in your family's folder as, an, as a modified tag and this way you can apply it to another project if you wanted to. Uh, but we're not going to do that in this case but it's, it's a simple matter to just go to the Revit uh, or the application menu and hit save as. In this case we're going to load it back into the project as a modified tag and then uh, later on, if we did want to use this on another project, we could just copy the tag off of this project and copy it onto another one. So I'm going to hit Load in the Project. So it's going to ask, do you want to overwrite the existing version? Of course you do. So hit Overwrite. And there you go. So now, if we start tagging, 
you'll see that the tag uh, will eliminate or mask the extension line that's uh, running through the uh, door and window. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing with the uh, window tag. So we'll go down to annotation. Our annotation symbols, we're looking for window tag, which is already loaded. Right click at it. So that opens up the window tag family. You can see up here it has an RFA extension. We already have it set up, or Revit uh, already has it set up by default to tag the windows by type, not by sequential number. So all we need to do is put in our masking region. So we're just going to do pick lines and work our way around the six lines that make up the boundary of the tag. There. And then I'm going to hit the green check and then load in the project. Now since we have opened up another file, it's going to ask us which uh, file to load this into. We want to load it into CL1-3, so we're not going to check the box next to door tag. So I'm going to hit OK, and then overwrite. So now I've just modified my two tags. So now let's take a look at the, uh, well, actually I'm going to take a look at the location for all the tags. So now you can um, either uh, tag the entire drawing at one time or you can tag individual elements. So I'm going to do the entire drawing. And I don't have a procedure for this in the book, although I may um, add that in. But uh, really all you need to do, and this is a fairly uh, straightforward process, is we're going to go up here to Tag All. We already have Door Tag selected. And then we're also going to select Window Tag. So I'm doing a Control Select. So Window Tag is selected and so is Door Tag. And then it's asking, do you want to tag all the objects in current view? Yes, we do. So we'll hit the OK button and they're all tagged. Now you'll see that the numbering that came up doesn't match the drawing. So we're going to go in and start retagging everything. And then also, I think we can go ahead and change the scale back to eighth inch to make these a little bit smaller. This is the uh, final scale of the drawing. So let's go ahead and um, click on one of these tags and we'll call this one number four. And then it's reminding you that you're changing the type parameter. And it could affect many elements, and that's what we wanted to do, so we're going to hit yes. So you can see all the deg, all the uh, windows that are of this type now have a 4 next to them rather than a 19 or whatever that number was. And we'll do the same thing for this one. So I'm clicking once on the tag, then once on the parameter, and then I'm typing in the correct value. And we have one more window to worry about. That's this one over here. Actually, two more windows, sorry. Okay, so we'll change that to one. Good. And then, finally, number 18 becomes number two. Great. Okay. You can see here how it masks out the extension line. See, there's normally a line that runs through here. We want it to be cutting through that. And then you can make some minor modifications later uh, to make this look a lot better. But for right now, we just want to tag this. Okay, let's tag the doors now. So same thing applies. So we're going to click on the door tag for door C, or what will be C. So we'll type in C. And then we'll also type in B for what is door number 13. And then door A is going to be changed later when we do our front door. But that will come later when we do the curtain walls. Okay, so you can see here it's a fairly quick process, once you're used to the process anyway, of uh, creating the tagging. So now if you want, you can go around and adjust these slightly so they look a little cleaner. The, the drafter in me always wants to make sure that the drawing looks its best. So I'll probably just spend a minute or two updating these extension lines to make sure that they look nice. There is no way to do all of these at once. You have to go through and hit each one individually. But in, as far as I'm concerned, I think the trade-off of having a parametric model rather than a non-parametric model, like you would find in AutoCAD, uh, is a lot better. 
So let me just uh, adjust some of these extension lines. There. And you can see as we adjust these tag locations, they can be aligned with one another. So that alignment line that pops in will help you to line things up. Okay. So it's a bit of work. So we're just going through all the extension lines. I'm trying to keep a running dialogue here while we do this so you don't fall asleep on me. Okay. And then we'll be done here in a moment. Okay, I'll tell you what, we'll catch the rest of these later. All right, so now at this point, I think we're good on the tag locations for the doors and windows. So now that's the end of part three. Not too many steps for uh, CL1-3. So I'll do a fit view, and it looks like we're ready to move on to CL1-4. So we're going to go ahead and stop the video here, and we'll pick it up with the next one.